Welcome to the Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva, and today we're gonna get some insight into the foreign exchange trading at the foreign exchange. My guest today is Leonard Newhouse, Jr. He is the owner of Auto Trading University, and welcome to the show. Thank you very much, Anthony, and thank you for having me. Uh, Usually I start my guests where they went to college, so uh, where'd you go to school? Okay, well, I don't know if I can remember back that far. It's just like 35, 40 years ago, but we'll see if we can recall it. Uh, I went to Mansfield State College in Mansfield, Pennsylvania. Wow. That was an experience. That's where I started, okay, because it's in Tioga County, northern Pennsylvania, and in the winters, it was on the side of a hill. So when you got up at 8 in the morning to walk to class, your tear would freeze to your face. It was freezing, okay? I survived that weather for about a year, and then I transferred to Kutztown, which uh-huh. again was Kutztown State College, not university as it is now, yep. showing you what a dinosaur I am. But uh, having said that, uh, so Mansfield and then Kutztown, and I started out in marine biology, and then I realized there wasn't many jobs in marine biology back in the late 70s, 76 to 80. Sure. So then I switched to a business major. Ah. And that's how I ended up getting a business mindset, if you'd like. So let's just go back a little bit before we get into what you're doing today. Um, in, in high school, when did you start thinking about going to college? Was it freshman year, senior year? When, when did it all begin for you? I'd say it was around the senior year because, you know, here you're getting out of school and it's like, what am I going to do next? You know, I have no skill. I have no trade. I was living in the Poconos, so there wasn't many jobs, good paying jobs. And I was like, maybe I should go to college and see what's happening there. Right. (laughs) So uh, I applied to some schools and Mansfield picked me up and uh, and then I started that way. But I had no idea what I was going to do, like most kids. Yeah. So so how was uh, Mansfield and and Kutztown uh, when you went to school? Give give the sense to the audience, uh, you know, how how the schools were. well, Mansfield, I said, was cold, but Mansfield was a very close-knit community because you're living on the side of a mountain, and Mansfield Town might have had 5,000 people in it, and the university had about 10,000, so that was <laughs> the town, you know? And uh, it was a great atmosphere. Uh, there was a lot of sororities there. The football team, basketball team were very competitive. They, a lot of kids going to the basketball thing because they had a big winning team. Matter of fact, kids out of New York, some, you know, really good basketball players would go to Mansfield because the coach was that good. So they were really tough in the state conferences of Pennsylvania back in the 70s, you know. And and then... And then Kutztown was just a blast. It was like living at a resort with all the people your own age. It was a (laughs) great time. I mean, I had a cram for every test. I'd have to stay up all night and study because up to the last minute I was out there (laughs) using the gyms and going to the rinks and the pool halls. And it was great. It was great. So so now you graduate from Kutztown. Uh, How does one go from graduating college to becoming the owner of Auto Training University? Wow. That's a loaded question. <laughs> well, we got we got about 30 minutes, so oh, that's geez, it. Better hurry up. Anyhow, so I got out of college, and I picked up a job as an accountant forward slash bookkeeper for a truck company. Oh. You know, that was my first job out of college, and I thought, okay, this is pretty good. But I'm only making, at the time, maybe 20000 a year, 25000 a year. Again, this is like 1980, right? The income yeah. was a lot different. I don't even know. Minimum wage might have been 5 bucks. Who knows, right? <laughs> but uh, having said that, so I, Time Magazine hit my desk one day, and it said, Houston strikes oil boom. And I looked at it, and it had a picture of Houston there and oil. I read the article. It says, minimum income down there, average income was 50000 a year. So I was like, 50 grand a year? What are these guys doing? So I called my buddy Lou, who was working at Bethlehem Steel at the time, and they were having their layoffs coming in at that point. I said, Lou, we should go to Texas and work in the oil field. I said, let's go make some money. He said, all right, I'm with you. Let's do it. I went down there. We drove down here to Houston. The very next day, Monday, I got there on a Sunday, I was hired making 50 grand a year. Oh, my God. Yeah, wasn't that amazing? Yeah. And then they told me I was working out of Alice, Texas, and I was going off Corpus Christi to work on the offshore oil rigs, and they gave me a month's worth of free room and board until I was able to get a couple paychecks and get a place. Wow. Yeah, so that was great. So then from there, I ended up going to Alaska. Yeah, so I was making a lot of money, and... I ended up, you know, in Alaska, they make like 100000 a year. So I was single, and I said, let me go to Alaska and make more money. I got nothing better to do. So I made a bomb of money, basically, and then I flew back to New York City back in 1984. So that was like from 80 to 84. And I said, okay, now I got a lot of money. I want to invest it. And I looked at the Wall Street Journal, and I said, I can't even read this paper. 
I said, I want to know how to read the Wall Street Journal. How the hell do I get involved? So I looked in the New York Times, looking for a job, no experience necessary, and a company called First Investors on Wall Street since 1930 gave me a job as an investment broker. So I had my own money. I went to school. I got a six and a 63. And then I did that for two years. And then I needed a seven to be a stockbroker. So I went and got a stockbroker's license, got a stockbroker's job. And then I did that for like eight to 10 years. And then I married an Irish woman. We went over to Ireland. And people found out in Limerick, Ireland, that I worked on Wall Street. So they, always, they started asking me questions about equities. You know, and at the time I was working at Prudential doing business and estate planning for Prudential in Limerick, right? Wow. And uh, a couple of very wealthy guys heard about some takeover plays on the FTSE, right? And they kept asking me, like calling me, what should I do with this stock? What should I? I was like, man, there has to be a need for a guy like this in this country, right? So uh, I started a firm called WallStreetIreland.com, hmm. right? And the first two stocks I recommended both doubled. So guys are putting like 10 grand, their money went to $40,000 in a wow. year. So everybody was talking about this American stockbroker living in Limerick, Ireland, right? All of a sudden my phones are ringing off the hook, people are opening accounts like crazy and they just bombed in millions of dollars to me, right? Wow. And I hired people, you know, and uh, they were helping. I had like 10 employees or whatever. And I was an intermediary for the largest stockbroking firm in Ireland. So they actually opened an account with the largest stockbroking firm that I would recommend they buy. And then eventually that stockbroken firm took over my whole company and I came back to America. Wow. And that firm is now still in Limerick, Ireland with my client base. Wow. Yeah, wow. so that was great. Made a lot of money there. So then I come over here and in 2001, so I had a lot of money to invest and I went to the NASDAQ market and the NASDAQ in 2001 went from 5,000 to 1,200 in about six months. So I'm like, and I was heavy in the NASDAQ market, right? So I took a hit, major hit, right? And I said, this is crazy. So in 1987, I had my own firm, right? And the 1987 crash took me out. I lost 150,000 as a 28 year old, wow. and that was all my money. And my two partners both lost 150 because we couldn't meet margin requirements when the market sold off. So we basically went to zero because of the crash, right? Yeah, I was 87. So then I accumulated money again, started my own firm in Ireland, WallStreetIreland.com, accumulated money again. In 2001, it took it all back again. So I was like, this is nuts. I said, this is not the way to invest. There's got to be a better way to go. So that's what made me get involved with a different market. I couldn't take it anymore. So that's what led me into this university, if you'd like. So now, uh, tell us a little bit about Auto Trading University. Well, basically, you have to understand, when you talk about investing, you have to talk about control. There's so much hope out there by people buying equities that there's more risk with holding a stock and hoping it comes back, the key word hope. Right. When you're in a position of hope, you're in a defenseless position because now it becomes luck, okay? When you trade Forex, because of the size of the market, you're going to have instantaneous execution. Now, when I say instantaneous execution, I'm selling into the international banks of the world 24 hours a day in a $5 trillion a day marketplace. The NASDAQ and NYSE combined is only a trillion a day. One market with 150 currencies trades $5 trillion a day versus over 10,000 stocks that you have to pick, right? So when I decided to get involved with a different asset class, I said, I need to have more certainty with my money. I got to be able to get out. I got to be able to, you know, realize there's not going to be manipulation, corruption. The reason I lost a lot of money in, in the NASDAQ, I put my money in a company where the CEO cooked the books. Mm. And then when they found out about it, they stopped trading on the stock and they knocked it in half and then everybody sold it off and it went down like 80% in a week. And I was wow. like, what the, you know, this can't be, right? So that's why I said, that market is not the market for me. It, it, there's gotta be a better way to make money. I can't keep accumulating money just to give it back every time there's a market correction. And funny enough, today with the coronavirus, the stock market's gonna go down 500 points in one day. Wow. And it's like lemmings. You know the old lemmings, everybody runs off the cliff and they follow each other? Sure. The stock market is the same way. When the market goes down, 
everybody tries to get out, but the broker only cares about his million dollar account and your other guys are put on hold. I know, I was a stockbroker for 16 years. I know, <laughs> I own my own firm. So when there's things that are not going well with your portfolio, you're taking care of your guys with the money and hopefully you'll get to these other people. You don't want to be rude, but you got to secure your income and keep your livelihood as well. So you're not being providing a disservice, you just can't service everybody at the same time, yeah. right? So having said that, that's what's wrong with the stock market because now all the lemmings are jumping off the cliff and you can't get out. And that's the problem with it. Yeah. Whereas in the currency market, it don't matter. So, so what does is, what is Auto Trading University do for, for people that want to get involved in it? Okay, so I spent well over 12 to 15 years developing this product. Okay, I have over $400,000 invested into it in research and development. And when I say that is because I had a lot of failures along the way where I lost money. Okay, so I legitimately didn't give up on it because it's a mind boggler that the Forex market is the largest market in the world by far, but yet so few people know how to use it. And it's also the most complicated market in the world. Yeah. So if you can simplify the largest market in the world and show consistency and safety, yeah. At the same time, showing them a high rate of return without the risk of a direct investment that only moves one way to make money, that's a golden idea. And nobody's been able to achieve that in the world up to the point where, like, that was my whole interest point. How can this be the largest market in the world and so few people ever know about it? And why do so many people take the risk and say it's too risky? I trust the euro is going to be the euro for the next umpteen years then I feel ABC stock is gonna stay in business and the executives aren't gonna take a golden parachute and blow me up, Sure. right? So that was my mindset when I went into the development of this product. I spent 12 years figuring out a trading strategy that I could count on and I programmed it into a software so now I can trade seven pairs simultaneously 24 hours a day without even watching it. And every single time it enters the market, it's because it hit my trade signal. I use a pivot point off the 30 minute chart. I put a stop and a target and using diversification because diversification is one of the elements of safety when you invest. The bigger your portfolio, the more consistency you have. You know, if you buy one stock, it goes down, you're done, dead money for the rest of your life. But if you buy 20, you get your dogs, but you also get some winners to offset it. Sure. That's just smart investing, right? So the same thing when you're doing this. If you try to trade just by yourself, which a lot of people do, say they trade the euro every day, every day, well, their whole mindset is based on one euro and one trade, whereas I'm trading seven and the computer's putting me in and out of the trade based on a trade signal that has over 75% accuracy rate. So now why do you use uh, the foreign exchange market compared to all the other markets? Because the foreign exchange market is controlled by the international banks of the world. The capital flow around the globe in the foreign exchange is over five trillion a day. So when I sell into the market, I'm selling into Citibank, I'm selling into Chase, I'm selling into the Bank of England, HSBC, whatever. So when you have that much liquidity, because the participants are international banks. I mean, who's the participant in ABC company stock? The shareholders. So if there's only so many shares being capitalized, say there's a million shares that are outstanding and there's only three quarters of a million floating publicly traded, well, the whole market liquidity is created by the shareholder. So when the thing goes wrong with ABC stock and I want to get out, one of those guys has to be willing to buy my stock and yet they know it's a bad deal. So yeah, yeah. are they going to give you any value? No, they're going to dump on you, right? And I traded level three on the NASDAQ. I was a market maker principal where I was setting inside bids and offers and making, because what you see on the outside is a level two quote. Highest bid, lowest offer is your level two quote. On the level three, it's all the principals that engage in the trading of NASDAQ that set what they're willing to pay and what they're willing to sell. So every time you go to work as a level three trader, you're seeing all the players and what their positions are. Wow. And you know who's the buyer and who's the seller. So when you see a big buyer all of a sudden become a big seller, you're diving. You ain't taking any of that and try to get out of that situation. So with the Forex, you don't ever have to worry about that. If I think the euro is going down, I'm going to sell euro. I'm just going to short it. You don't have to borrow the stock, get all these margin things and blah, blah, blah. You just sell the euro because I think it's going lower. And there's any bank out there that's going to buy it because they have to. Right. Yeah. And then if I think it's going up, I'm going to buy the pound, whatever. So it's easy transactions, immediate execution. And when you have execution to that that degree, you can actually set an logarithm mathematical formula up that can beat it because you're going to execute on the fifth decimal. Wow. Which is nuts. Right. So now 
how do you feel about uh, computer aided trading uh, compared to the hybrid trading in, in, in the best way to, to invest? We, you know, what's well, better? Basically, basically, this is the whole thing. If you're going to make an investment, the biggest risk or the biggest uh, emotion you have to overcome is the discipline of the investment. See, people buy stocks. They get a call from a stockbroker. I heard this stock's going well, you know, and then they buy it and it goes straight down. Great point. A buddy of mine called me about two years ago. He says, Lenny, I just bought this great stock, right? I said, yeah, what's the name of it? And I won't say the name of it, but I said, I looked at it. I said, so how much did you buy of it? He goes, I bought a quarter million shares. It was only like 30 cents and it's up to 45 cents already. So I looked at it. The average daily volume on this stock was 20,000 shares. He bought a quarter million in a day. And he jacked it up over 50%, uh, right? And, and I looked and I said, buddy, I said, you're not getting out of that stock. I said, if you try to dump on that stock, you're going to make it 10 cents. I said, so you're dead. As soon as the, the sellers know that you're dumping on it, they're ducking. And he's been holding it for two years since and has never been up. Wow. Because he got in the illiquid stock and he wasn't able to get out. But he was never told that. And now he's got $60,000 sitting there doing nothing. He's livid. He's livid about it. I warned him. Like, I didn't go near that stock, right? <laughs> But computer-aided, when you have to deal with no emotion, you have to have the discipline to make a plan. People invest without plans. That's yeah. the problem. Oh, ABC Company, I heard it's going to go up. This guy told me this. They dump money in there, and the stockbroker defends it for the next six months. When's ABC going up? Well, I hear this, that, and another thing, and the financials are coming out. They're going to make It's a bunch of defense. To be a stockbroker, you have to be a defensive player, and you have to be a great communicator. I was, okay? I raised millions being a stockbroker, but I wasn't making people a lot of money, and that's why I kind of didn't believe in it. And then when I did finally get out of it and go to this market, I realized all the mistakes I made. So okay. what's what's the offer that that uh, Auto Trading University do for people? So this is it. The forex market is now simplified. The company slogan is "Trading Made Easy." Okay. The reason it's easy, you take a test that's one hour long, and I basically teach you what an equity swing is, what drawdowns are, capital preservation, keeping things at zero line. Because when you invest money, you don't want to go below your initial investment. You want to maintain or at least waive. Capital preservation is the number one rule of trading or investing. Mm -hmm. And you have to have liquidity and certainty to have capital preservation. If you're on a high to nothing and go buy ABC Company and the, they decide they lose a contract and the thing dumps, you sit there for five years because nobody wants to take a loss. That's the other thing about equities. I, I took losses. Like, you got to once in a while bite the bullet. I was wrong. Let me just take this dead money, realize it, and try to make it back somewhere else, right? <laughs> Most people won't do that. They're, oh, I hope it comes back. I'm going to wait for it to come back. And the stock market says, hold on to it. Stocks come back over 20 years. You'll be fine. That's their pitch. I was there, right? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. What works is having a specific plan in the most liquid market in the world predetermined before entry to know exactly what your risk and reward is. And most people have no understanding of how to make a plan. So you have a PowerPoint here. So why don't you give the audience, uh, go through the few slides that you have. Okay, yeah, great. So the first thing is I'm showing is this is my account with about four or five days of trading. And I'm sleeping and I'm waking up to mostly green, okay? The MT4 platform is the standard Forex platform in the world. When I woke up in this case, uh, you can see that I have probably about 20 winners and I have about five losers. And that's in about three days, maybe a week. That's normal trading. I mean, the, th the computers are around trip your money about 70, 80 times a month, believe it or not, right? So what we do is... When you can wake up in the morning and see your statement and know what you're at risk for every time. Like, let's put it this way. If I have a 100 pip stop and I know my average pip value is 86 cents, let's say, right, which it is right now. But having said that, the most I will ever lose on one trade is 1.72 percent. One point. So if you put 10 grand in, the most you're going to lose on a trade is 172 dollars. When you win, since I'm hitting over a 75% strike rate, mm -hmm. I'm making 68 cents. So if I'm making 68 cents and I got three times 68 against a loss of 172, that net positive me. Yeah. So even if the market would go away and say it wants to crash, the most I'm going to lose is 1.7% of my money and I'm back to cash. If I want to stop trading, I just stop and take my money back. <laughs> I lost 1.7%. Who cares? Right? Yeah. Yeah. But... 
It's the systematic plan of getting that bunt signal every single day that accumulates the wealth. Yeah. So I'm not trying to hit a home run and say, let me buy the euro and hold it for a year and look to make double my money. It doesn't work like that. I'm in and out of the euro, the pound, the Australian dollar, the Canadian loon, whatever, every day. And I'm in and out in the short spurts because it's based on technicals. So what Forex Hybrid does, the course that we offer, and as you can see, the track this, record. This is the second slide. Yes, that's the second slide, and it's literally the track record from a third-party independent source showing the trading system making 93% last year, which is nuts. These guys on Wall Street, they brag about 13 to 15% gains in hedge funds. Who cares? I got a fund called the Target 50. I'm consistently hitting close to that, but if I fail and make 20, okay, I didn't do too good. These guys brag about 13 to 15%. Why? Because they're in equities. And then they're investing in equities in emerging markets in other countries. It's like, uh-oh, now what? What happens? You run out of equities in America? There's 10,000 of them. You got to go overseas to hopefully they don't do any scandal over there and you're able to get your money back? Give me a break. This is the international market. Currencies. The pound, the euro, the Australian dollar. They don't get manipulated. If Warren Buffett said, I want to sell all my euros, they say, fine, Warren, we'll take them all out in five minutes, won't move the price, and do what you want with your money. Doesn't matter. If he said he wanted to sell all ABC company, boom, you're dead if you own it. It'll be go to zero. So that's the track record, and it's independent third-party source, my FX book, which is very common in the industry, that gives your verification of your trades. So I linked this to their website, and they kept my track record for me. So that's good. So what we offer for the Forex Hybrid 101, I will not allow anybody to use my software unless they pass my course, which is a one hour course and they take 20 questions. The reason I'm doing that, if you don't pass the test, you don't understand what you're doing and you're not gonna discredit my product. Mm -hmm. So when you go through my course, you pay $99, but the course is gonna controlling equity swings, understanding risk management. You know, it's funny, Anthony, I have seven licenses, okay? A seven, a six, a 63, a three, a 34, a life and an ethics and code, right? I, they're all expired now because I don't need them. I barely believe in them, but you can't take the knowledge away. You can only take somebody's money and clothes away, but you can't take a man's knowledge away, so I have that knowledge. And the reason I have a three and a 34 is because they're futures and commodities and Forex exams given by the federal government, and I wanted to compare my product with everything out there, every asset class out there, and that's why I took the courses and passed them, okay? So having said that, every course I ever taken not once did they mention risk management. I'm a stockbroker sitting with portfolios of hundreds of thousands of shares. I buy a company I believe in. So everybody I pitch, I'm pitching ABC company. I'm building a big inventory of it, right? I believe it's going to go up. Not once did they say, but if it doesn't go up, what do you do? Mm -hmm. That's the difference here. Risk management in this is superior to any other market on the planet. Okay, so I know exactly what my risk reward is in every trade. I teach notional value versus equity. Notional value is to do with leverage. Leverage is the greatest tool you could possibly have. And if everybody is leveraged in the world, when you buy a house, you put down a small amount of money, you borrow 80% of it, you're leveraged. And you hope your house price goes up, which it didn't happen every case. People lost money, right? Yeah. Short sales. Okay, so that's that. And the course... For only $99, I'm going to give you free software, a practice account, and I'm going to give you free instruction. For 99 bucks, that's nuts. There's courses out there charging $3,000 to $50,000 to make you a trader. Traders are not bred, they are born. Nobody is going to be a trader and try to take a course and think they're going to be successful in six months. It's a lifelong event. I simplified it. The computer trades, you set the risk. On the rule, liquidity, you have to have liquidity to have execution. And the other thing is insolvency risk. So many people buy a stock and then the stock goes down. They don't know what to do with it, right? It's because they ran out of money. Well, guess what? If you have leverage and you made a bad investment, you buy another one against it. That's a good thing. So if you have leverage, it reduces the insolvency risk because even though you had a dog stock and you have dead money, you now can buy something else and maybe make it back. So leverage is a great investment tool if you know how to use it. If you don't, you're going to blow yourself up. I totally understand how to use it. And this product has all the reasons. If you go to the website, by the way, at the bottom, it says the corner rules of in investment success. Every reason I ever lost money, I figured out why and I wrote it. <laughs> so if you read that, you won't make that mistake. And this is what this system is geared on. I took out all those mistakes and created this product. So where, where do people go? What's the website? AutoTrade U. 
Autotrade.com, ladies and gentlemen. Auto trade you. Let the computer make your money. Has no emotion, great discipline, and you're investing in the biggest market in the world. You're always liquid. You can play it anytime you want. And it's, the, to me, the holy grail of investing. Highest return, lowest risk. Great. So we are coming to the end of our show. And uh, usually I That ask, was quick. Give me another hour. <laughs> <laughs> usually I ask my guests, uh, what advice do you want to give to the parents, their sons and daughters that are interested in going to, you know, into the foreign exchange market, you know, they want to invest, something like that. What advice do you want to give to them? The biggest thing I can say is the world is investing the wrong way. They need to be open-minded and explore the territories. Believe it or not, the most user-friendly for my product in the Forex market is the younger generation because they've seen their parents see 401ks go to 101ks, right? They've seen the crashes and the stress involved, blah, blah, blah. At the end of the day, if you're broad-minded and you have to diversify, but explore the different options out there. Don't get hung up on habitual capitulation. Human beings are very capitulated when they do the same thing every day and take it as the norm. But normal complacency is a bad thing because if you're doing the wrong thing, then how do you know what the right thing is unless you change? So you have to be open-minded and try things out. I mean, I am a risk taker. For me doing this and taking the hits I took on this market when I got it started, I never gave up because I believed in what I was doing and I understood the magnitude of liquidity and execution because of all the fraud I was up against in the equity market. So I learned and I'm extremely excited because I just, my kid's using it, he's making money. I have other people using it, they're all making money and they know nothing about markets, nothing about trading, but they look, love looking at their platform three or four times a day and waking up every day and seeing what it's doing. It's just in your veins, you know? Well, good. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show, Lenny. I appreciate it. All right, it. no problem, Anthony. Thanks for having me, buddy. You got it. You're a good guy. So you've been watching The Secrets of College Planning. I'm your host, Anthony Uva. Until next time.